try to tailor my CV. And I've also attended programs in that respect. When they are marketing and looking for people to bring in their CVs and all of that. I've attended such programs and hoped that, okay, the CV would go some distance. Okay. Um, but then, all to no avail. All to no avail. All to no avail. It's almost, it almost feels like if your CV doesn't get to the decks of who has the power to do the recruitment or is interested in recruiting you, nothing will happen. There's been an age-old cliche that to secure a job in Ghana is about whom you know. And they've taken it a notch higher. You don't only need to know people, you need to be known back. Yes, you need to be known Is it back. that you've not had contacts in the past 10 years or so uh, to, be, to use that as a leverage uh, to secure a job? And is this a myth or it is true that competence is not the yardstick? but nepotism and cronyism are the main sources of jobs for Ghanaian graduates. Well, I, I don't want to be in a position to be judgmental when it comes to issues like this, but it has become a belief amongst friends of mine who have found in, certain, in, in this situation because if you go to certain places and you meet certain characters who are holding certain positions, you begin to wonder that are these people actually qualified to hold these positions? Even if you sent your applications to these places, would you even get a look? And I, I believe that, yes, you, you really need to know somebody and be known back. And you go to state institutions and there is an old lady sitting at a desk all weak and frail. Maybe she's past the retirement age of 60. Um, isn't there a way of shedding off the old guard to make room for young, agile, and exuberant people like you with fresh ideas? Oh yes, there is. Uh, I believe it has to do with our pension system and our, our, uh, and our severance packages that are, are prepared for people who have been in the public service and also in the private service. I believe that because Sometimes there are packages they know of yeah. that they would get when they retire or cut short their, their working life would might not be lucrative enough for them or encouraging enough for them. They prefer to stay old, stay longer till, till the retirement uh, legal requirement age. To, okay, to, to we'll, soon, we'll soon discuss what you do on a typical day yes. as a master's degree holder and an Uber driver. Yes. But, you know, we live in a society where your younger dependents yes. will always rely on you because you are the big brother, you are, yes. you are an uncle. Yes. And how have you been able to explain to your family that times are hard, the two and a half decades you've spent in the classroom and lecture halls, you've not started reaping the dividends yet, so they shouldn't put you under too much pressure? Well... I really rely on their understanding and their uh, compassion when it comes to issues like this. Um, explaining to them is quite a difficult thing to do because uh, when they have invested so much in your, in your education and uh, they are not seeing the benefits as at, after all, after a second degree, it becomes frustrating. In, the, in, in times past, you probably need only a high school living certificate or a first degree and you are fine. But these days, it's, 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 it begins to, it comes to a reality that a second degree is not even a guarantee. Even if you are professional, it, it's not almost a guarantee. But uh, if I have any advice for anyone, I would say a person should seek for a professional uh, certificate or professional training. That is informative. You mean people shouldn't go through the formal system as usual from your WASI, you do a first degree, then you do a master's and possibly a PhD. Are you recommending that they go for ACCA or a technical certificate? Yes, I believe that uh, these technical certificates are given a different consideration. They feel uh, the belief is that uh, you, you spent time in learning a specific thing and this specific thing, it's something that the organizations need on a daily basis.
But in Ghana, those of us who even attended high school, for those that couldn't make it to SHS and went to a vocational or technical school, they were seen as second fiddles to yes, us. Yes, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, they are the ones that are able to put food on the table today because we need, we need the carpenters today, we need the electricians today, every day. And the moment you call these guys, they have a fee that you have to pay, even before they do the work for you. You would pay them for, for just lifting their screwdrivers or their hammers. So I think that uh, these professional courses, these vocational courses should be very much encouraged. So are you encouraging artisanry? I have a friend who recounted an anecdote to me that he had a younger relative who decided to quit school quite early and he went to Magazine. Magazine is a popular sprawling mechanic center in Kumasi. And already he started putting foot on some people's you know, tables. Yeah. So they were always accusing him, why waste all of your time in school? Do you think merging secular or formal education with artisan acumen, you are in school but you can mend stuff. You are in school, but you can be an electrician. Do you think that, will be, that hybrid will be the way to go now? Rather than street jacket education, you become a book long, so to speak, until you think uh, eventually you will stay in an air-conditioned condi air office and put on a suit and a tie. Yes. Uh, in my GSS, I actually did my GSS too in, 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 the, in the Volta region. I uh, attended Amazing Love Secondary Schools. I, in my time, we did a lot of technical, we had technical drawing, we had technical skills. And these were courses I enjoyed. In fact, at the time, I always thought about architecture as a beautiful thing because of technical drawing. But uh, at a point, you, you realize that, oh, okay, let's, let's read more book. You know, I, I, I enjoyed reading. So I, I, I veered off. Uh, the passion for technical things and ended up reading a lot more. Well, the encouragement for reading was there. But the encouragement for technical, professional things, vocational things, weren't so much available because uh, the belief is that you, you have to aim high, so high, and uh, you would reap the, the benefits. And, and that's the prayer till today. Senor Bedao is a master's degree holder from Legon Center for International Affairs and Diplomacy. He studied international relations. He's an unemployed or underemployed graduate. He's an Uber driver. Do you have a similar graduate unemployment story to share? You can reach us via WhatsApp from now on 0552-225-911. I repeat our WhatsApp line. 0552-225-911. We'll be glad to read your thoughts. And very soon, we'll open the phone lines for you to also speak. Um, Ghana is a nation of slogans and titular appellations. First, it was NYEP. Then it became YEA. Then somewhere along the line, helping people in small-scale businesses. They came with NEIP. And now we have NABCO, a Nation Builders Corps. How do you feel as people who keep, you know, scouring for jobs? But every now and then, the minister for the sector came out to stay, to stay, say today or yesterday, uh, he's in the person of Honorable Ignatius Bafuiwa. He says, uh, government in the past 15 months has created up to 1 million jobs. So when you hear some of these things and you find yourself outside the bracket of oh, those who should be singing Alleluia or Allah or Akbar, how do you feel? Are these only, you know, titles or slogans with nothing significant and pragmatic on the ground? Well, I believe there is some benefit to what they do in, uh, in creating such opportunities. Um, I believe some people get to benefit from such opportunities. But I don't believe that a greater number of people, you know, get to reap from these policies. I think it's just for some few people who get to the opportunity to. Um, it, I, I think such programs have benefited people, cushioned people for some time. But I believe that uh, it doesn't have the longevity to it. And uh, this longevity is a problem. 
if after a few years or a few months, uh, NYEP or YEA, you know, sustains people, and after a while and it collapses, what happens to the people? Do these institutions get to keep these people on? Um, but I believe that if a uh, second look is put on it, uh, some, some benefits, it would, it would become a very good program. No, but have you taken time to go to the Secretariat of YEA to look at a model that fits into your expertise and skill sets and you didn't get the opportunity? Or have you always relied on the private sector? Well, I, I had relied on the, on the on state policies for employment at some point. Uh, it was the NYEP. That was after my uh, national service. Uh, even though I worked also in parliament in helping uh, a member of parliament in his, in his work as a research assistant, I, I also went to the NYEP office to look at models that I could helping. Well, I was given the opportunity for, for about a year plus, but after that, there was nothing else I could do about it. Um, but I believe that if the opportunities for teaching can never end, people want to learn. And I believe that somebody like me who has studied a bit, I can always teach. It's something that one could do and enjoy. Yeah, many people really want to go to a teacher training college yes. and start earning some allowance yes. before going into mainstream university education. That didn't cross your mind because you didn't think you would come up against uh, such stiff unemployment mm -hmm. regime. I, I, I taught at some point in my life. Uh, when I was in secondary school, I taught uh, younger ones in the junior secondary school. I never thought that I would need to have a teacher certificate to be a teacher. I felt that once you know, once you have acquired such knowledge, you should have the opportunity to teach. But I realized that in, 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 uh, for you to uh, get such opportunities, it's either you went through the teacher's training system or... Uh, you, you put your application directly at the Ghana Education Service. We shall soon go and listen to His Excellency the President. Um, a message from a viewer. His name is Eric from Latebi Okoshi. He says, Good evening, Irubad. The launch of the Nation Builders Core is a good agenda by the government to create jobs. I would urge unemployed graduates to apply to help build the nation. And another texter uh, says, I think this is the greatest TV show in Ghana. Keep up the good work. Our leaders don't care anything about us. You could also share your opinions via WhatsApp for now until we open the phone lines. Our WhatsApp line is 0552-225-911. I repeat, 0552-225-911. 911. You can share your thoughts with us on this text line. I'll ask you one last question, then we we'll go and listen to His Excellency the President. Some people have said, say no to this, you know, program because sustainability has not been explained yet. And then number two, they are, you, you are only going to get a pittance as your allowance, 700 Ghana cities a month. This is when your take home cannot even take you home. What do you have to say to people who are pessimistic about this program His Excellency launched today? Well, I would say that they should. But then from your Uber driving, you make more than 700 Ghana every month? Yes, I do. You make approximately how much a I month? I make approximately 1,000 cities a month. For a master's degree holder? Yes, I make and, approximately 1,000. And you aren't too young? Yes. <laughs> you have a wife? No, I'm not married. Yes. And <laughs> uh, so, should they go for a 700 Ghana a month salary and allowance? Oh, no, knowing that it's the government and uh, the government cannot, uh, might not be able to sustain anything uh, that is too huge for them. Uh, I think they are trying to limit it to what they can afford to, to, to distribute amongst the people who they take on on this project. Yes.
Okay. Um, Senor Bedao, we go for a commercial break and listen to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudanko Akufuado, when he earlier today launched Nation Builders Core, um, a flagship policy program to create jobs for graduates in the Republic of Ghana. Stick and stay, we'll be back shortly. <music> NAPCO will be the vehicle to deliver 100,000 jobs in seven prioritized areas defined as the following modules. Educate Ghana, Heal Ghana, Feed Ghana, Revenue Ghana, Digitize Ghana, Enterprise Ghana, and Civic Ghana. Module qualification and recruitment processes and all the essential criteria along with detailed information are all available on the website of NAPCO where initial applications will be received. The website's address for the receipt of applications and any other information you may need on the scheme is www nabco.government.gh After the end of this ceremony, the web portal will be open to begin receiving applications from graduates as long as they are citizens of this country and have duly discharged their national service obligations. There are no charges or costs and no paper application forms to fill. Everything is being done online and on the website of NAPCO. This will optimize efficiency in the processing of applications as well as afford the opportunity of, for checking with other available national databases to prevent fraud. With the application processes closing on 1st June 2018, it is expected that by 1st July, selected applicants will become this country's first NAPCO trainees. We will receive training and will be deployed to commence their work by 1st August 2018. For the attainment equity and fairness. Every constituency has a stated allocation out of 100,000 placements. This has been worked out based on a waiting formula, thus ensuring all constituencies, large or small, adequate representation. With the ultimate aim being to help guarantee employability of these graduates, placements will last for a period of three years, earning them a stipend of high 700 Ghana CDs every month. This is a modest but important beginning towards the restoration of their dignity. Beneficiaries will also receive continuous skills training and retraining on the job, both to equip and guide their future career paths. The security offered by this graduate employment scheme implies that graduates have sufficient time to make prudent choices on their future entry onto the labor market, on potential interests of starting businesses and entrepreneurship, and even on definitive clarity on further learning options, guided by experiences and the benefit of exposure to the world of work. NAPCO is placing particular emphasis on some essential core values that are key to building and transforming a nation, and which will be 
output from the productive efforts of its workforce. It is establishing performance indicators and standards for macro trainees. The scheme will deliberately target evaluative efforts of them to ensure the trainees exit, exit comprehensively preferred for the labor market. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hear you asking what is going to be done about persons who do not have diplomas or degrees. The answer is this. NAPCO is freeing up the Youth Employment Agency, YEA, of the burden of dealing with everything to do with the employment amongst the youth, especially graduates. NAPCO is granting YEA extra absorptive capacity to concentrate on non-graduates. YEA will also recruit 18,000 non-graduates this year. Last NACO commences recruitment of 100,000 graduates. Government's commission, commitment to job creation will not end here, but will be accelerated through the implementation of our flagship programs of one district, one factory, one village, one dam, and the program for planting for food and jobs. We're also creating an enabling economic environment for the private sector to thrive, which will drive an investment, foreign and domestic, and thereby help create jobs. I thank my brilliant, hard-working Vice President, Alhaji Dr. Mahamadou Baumir, <coughs> who has led this effort tirelessly and all those who contributed immeasurably to making this day possible. To all our young graduates who qualify to enter this scheme, NAPCO is yours. Own it and have something meaningful and fulfillment happen for yourselves and for your country. Be proud to say, I am a nation builder. And this country will be thankful to you too for rising up to the challenge. I believe very strongly that Ghana is in the cusp of a bold new beginning which will repudiate the recent culture of failure. Accordingly, I declare the Nation Builders Corps, NAPCO, duly launched. You welcome back. Just gone by was a speech or an excerpt of the speech of His Excellency the President, Nanado Danko Akufuado, um, saying some really sweet things, uh, uh, Senor, that this program is going to be very swift. Um, by the 1st of June, that's next month, you must have submitted your credentials and screening will be done till the 1st of July. And by the 1st of August, there should be people in various offices and fields working. How does this timeline come to you? Is it assuring enough? It seems quite ambitious, and I hope that uh, they can keep up with their own timelines. Um, and His Excellency says your placement can last for three years. And for pessimists, they may think between now and 2020, when we go to the polls, it's just a little shy of over two years. So is this a political gimmick to get re-elected? Or if you think His Excellency and his government have a genuine interest uh, to solve the long-standing unemployment problem with graduates in Ghana? I believe it's a genuine interest, and I believe that it's an effort to solve this problem. As to whether it's, it's a political gimmick, uh, two years is enough time to judge whether the program works or not. And uh, I think that uh, if it is 
in, if it's designed in such a way as to encourage people and it's giving some people livelihoods, I think uh, then it's a success. But if in two years uh, something like uh, this program does not assure uh, people within the core of how it's going, then uh, I think it is also going to be a marking scheme for the, the sitting government. Now, so let's assume I'm, I'm a graduate, of course I am, and I'm unemployed. So I go through the screening and selection process, I get a job, and after three years, what happens? Yes, that's the challenge with a lot of, politi a lot of these political programs. Uh, they, they have a time limit, a time, a time frame, and uh, these time frames um, well, it, it really depends on the ability of the, 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 the person in the core to get something else to do, uh, not being assured of uh, what happens next. He has to also look out there and see what he can get to do after the call. Okay. A few text messages, and you can send yours to 0552 nine one one zero five five two 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 five nine one one and this is from Ejenim. Ejenim is sending this text from Suhum. He says the nation builders core thing is a palpable lie. And that is the view of Ejenim. And Al Hassan from Takradi says the launch of this NAPCO it's merely one of the political ways of taming heated citizens. I pray for my brother in the studio to get a job. Then uh, Samuel from Sunyang says, you will go to public offices and see old men and women who cannot even stand on their feet, still occupying positions. Why, he asks. This is madness. Um, please keep your messages a bit decorous for us. So just as we clean up people, ghost names from the pay salary structure, do you think there needs to be a clean up exercise to make sure anybody who uses a football age, so to speak, the person looks 65, but in the person's birth certificates, they are 50. Is there a way you think you would recommend to government to clear some of these old people to provide a vacuum uh, for younger people who have the competence to occupy the positions? Yes, uh, I, the only way I, I see a cleanup process being done is by improving the severance packages and the pension packages for people in office today so that the younger people who have more energy can take their positions and help build the country. Okay, um, you may now join us via phone. Uh, you can call us on 0302-904-768. The number will soon be um, displayed on your screen. Um, you can call 0302-904-768. Are you an unemployed graduate? And do you find the launch of Nation Builders Corps as a panacea uh, to a long-standing graduate unemployment issue? A text message from Omar Musa says, it's about time we came together to forge a national consensus on nation building. The hallmark of nation building is nationalism. Ghanaians must determine their own destiny. Keep the messages coming. Uh, there is a caller on the line. Your name and where you're calling from, please. Yes, uh, good evening. My name is Idris. And you're welcome to the show, Idris. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, Idris, I can hear you. Yes, I'm calling from Scra. In Accra. Yes, in Accra, in the suburb of Tanzuma. Okay. Yes, uh, in fact, I would first and foremost want to congratulate you on this local uh, discuss. And I will urge all you to tune into this program because it's very educative. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I congratulate you on that. Let me quote. In this country, I don't know, in the past 15, um, I don't know, in the past 15, can you speak up a bit, my brother? Your voice is a bit yes. inaudible. I'm saying that 
saying that in this country, nepotism and cronyism has become the hallmark of our political leaders in employing the youth. As a result of this, hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Make your point, bro. Yes. As a result of this, most youth uh, don't see the potential that they have. They, they think even if they do their best, they will not be recognized. Unless you belong to a political party, or you have family members, or you have church members, or most members who have the privilege of being top managers in most corporate organizations. And I think this thing should be a thing of the past. For a nation like Ghana to develop, we have to do away with this kind of nepotism. Okay. Thank you so much. We will forget it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for making time with us from Shukra. You may also call the phone line on your screen or send us your WhatsApp message on 0552-225-911. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? My, my name is Atikpo and I'm calling from Asham and Lebanon. Okay, welcome to the show, uh, Atikpo. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ibra. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Sanyo for being uh, very straightforward and uh, with a genuine mind. Uh, we need people like you to speak their mind and to, to, be, to say exactly how they see things. Uh, uh, I'm very happy. Um, it's unfortunate that after going through school for two decades, over two decades or so, we got to do master's degree as well as a small well program. And, um, I want to just say one, two, two, one or two things about the Nation Builders Corps program. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, at one time when I was attending the program at the Tabdani district, uh, one of my pioneers, uh, I call my grandmother, told that, that mm -hmm. there is no bad government. It's just that everybody has their own ideas about doing things. And I think that the president of Ghana and not for adults, and for he is doing what he knows is best for our unemployed graduates. And I think that everybody will get their own share of this program. Those who think, will take it lightly and think that maybe it's for some political gimmick or maybe a, a devil who will know uh, 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 how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Your point is well made. Thank you so much for making time. You may also call onto the show or send us a WhatsApp message on 0552-225-911. Before I take the next call, this is coming from Tando from Achim Suedro. He says, good evening. This program is not going to solve unemployment. Our leaders, he means the program that was launched by the president today. Our leaders are not going to help the youth. The value is the same with all political parties. That is quite pessimistic. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? And kindly um, lower the volume on your set. Hello. Yeah, hi, your name and where are you calling from? Hello. Good evening. Benjamin from where? Okay, please make your point, uh, Ben. Uh, actually, I don't have, uh, listen, I just want to thank the President for coming up with this crucial decision to have the youth of our guest country. Okay, thank you so much for uh, making time. Thank you, Ben. Yes, thank you, Ben. The, the texter expressed quite a pessimistic view that leaders don't have the youth at heart. Yes, uh, it's, I, I see it from a very interesting position because um, this leaders... Sorry, I'll be cutting in uh, from here. Sorry about that, Senor. Hello, your name and where are you calling from? Yes, Mr. Solo made a point. You talk about the vocational training programs. Please, can you... And your name and where are you calling from, please? Please. So, 
Um, hello. Yeah, you're making a good point. But please, I, I say your name and where you're calling from. Okay, go ahead. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. We, all, we need to encourage our children to take up practical technical programs, programs that can help them to find something doing when they finish schooling. So yeah, you did make a point that uh, going to school and learning, uh, 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 going to apprentices, uh, apprenticeship at the same time, how would that be? It will be very, very useful, especially when you can learn, you can take up apprenticeship for one year into electrical or any other technical programs. Okay. Then, yeah, on, especially on holidays, if there could be uh, how do you call it, models like that, I think that the, uh, the, the, the uh, nation business course program can go a very long way to help all these unemployment Issues. Thank and you so much. Thank you so much for making yes. this valid point. 0552-225-911 is the text message. Uh, is there a WhatsApp line to send us your messages to 0552-225-911. Hello, your name and where are you calling from, please? Hello, my name is Manaji. I'm calling from Pokhrizia. Okay, uh, from Town. How are you, bro? I'm fine. Okay, speak up a little bit. Okay, I'm fine, sir. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Make your points, bro. Oh, all right. Now, um, I want to say kudos to the government for this uh, program. You know, um, most of the time, if you graduate and you apply for a job, you are, most of the jobs that come, you know, it's like, you're supposed to have some experience, three years experience and all that. Now, um, what I see with this program is that it's going to equip the graduates with the needed experience so that will be marketable on the job market. All right, so um, if you're a graduate and you are home and you're having a job, you have the opportunity to do something for three years without the experience and also earn some amount of money. You know, so that you need to be like a business to your family and all that. So okay. um, I think that um, it's a very valuable program. It's great okay. service and it's going to um, help the youth, you know, so, so that we can back it up. So, uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for calling onto the show. You could also join us via text. I'll read a few of your messages. And um, the WhatsApp line to use is 0552 225. 911. And, um, Senor, um, you've heard the views that have been shared by people. Someone mentioned partisanship. In your endeavor to secure yourself a job, have you ever had a sense that you were denied or deprived because you weren't a card bearing member? But let me take this caller. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Good evening, uh, my brother. Thanks for making time. Your name and where you calling from? I am Eric. You are? Eric. Eric from where, Eric? I'm, I'm calling from Diablo. Okay. And uh, speak up a little bit, Eric. Okay. I am calling from Diablo. Yes, I can hear you. You can make your point, Eric. All right. Without trying to encourage that, uh, it looks like we always want to you know, blame government for the inability to uh, help the youth or the graduates with employment. But uh, I feel that if they also have something to do when it comes to creating a people yes. You know, when a church is not really teaching the people what is inside them, the good things that are there to get. There's not only the books that we can carry. The, the things that we have to learn are not only in the knowledge. There's a lot that we learn that are not in it. But all the time we want to let it look like it is when you are going to see that you have something you can offer. 
Okay, thank you so much yes. for making time. You are our last caller. Thank you so much. And Senor, let's discuss your business and your future. And this Uber car you are driving is not your bona fide property. No, it's not. You work and then you make sales to somebody. Yes. So how do you envisage your next four years or five years? And what appeal will you make to captains of industry uh, to consider you, so to speak, and other young people who have graduated and hold a first degree or a second degree? And you can freely share your email and your phone number. Yes. Uh, in respect to my Uber business, I... I see it as a means, a means to an end. Yeah. I feel that uh, this would give me the opportunity to raise some funds to venture into private business, a small business of my own, and as well as, uh, as, well as probably acquire uh, another vehicle of some sort. No, but if you get... earn 1000 a month... <laughs> How long will that take? Yes, it will, it, will, it will take a longer time. But you yeah. see, uh, it, it's about opportunities. And, uh, and I feel that uh, what the venture in which I am in as driving would give me the opportunity somehow, by God's grace, to get some other vehicle, probably on a higher purchase uh, uh, condition, you know, which would also be useful. I've, I've gone into uh, financial institutions to seek opportunities of working to own my vehicle. But it seems that almost all the financial institutions want someone who already has the money in his account or who already has uh, such uh, revenues, uh, cash flow uh, buoyancy to, to, for them to support such a business. Uh, they don't seem to want to take risk in uh, the young people trying to do some business. Okay, so um, if I had a company and yes. I wanted to employ you, um, how can I contact you? Yes, uh, you can contact me on my phone number. It's a 0240-320-510. And my email is uh, senyogbedao at gmail.com. It's just my name at gmail.com. Okay. Um, um, kindly, kindly consider Senor Bedo a very affable and eloquent gentleman. He drives an Uber, even though he holds a master's degree in international relations from Lesiad University of Ghana. Um, reach him and have a discussion with him on zero two four zero three twenty five ten. 0240-320-510. Till we come your way tomorrow with another edition of Time with Irbad Ibrahim. Thanks for making time and good night.